I took your presents for granted, but I always cared, and I miss the love we shared. How do I say goodbye to what we had? The good times that made us laugh out of weight and bad. I thought we'd get. Is going to leave. All I know is where we've been and what we've been through. Ooh. If we get to see Say
took your presence for granted, but I always cared, and I miss the love we shared.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending the service for Miss Wright this morning. As service is about to begin, I'm just going to ask those of you who are giving tributes today in person if you can speak directly into the mic so the folks on the live stream can hear. And once again, I want to thank you for attending services. We will be starting shortly. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to say good morning to everyone. On behalf of Sister Joyce Wright, entire family, I would like to welcome you for joining us and virtually watching this home going and celebration of life service. We thank you for your support, kind words, and prayers at this time. On behalf of my wife, Diane, myself, Faith Miracle Temple founders, Bishop Al Baxter, Mother Delise Baxter, along with the entire Faith Miracle Temple family, we extend our warmest and deepest condolences and pledge to stand with, comfort, and be available to assist Sister Joyce's family. For Sister Joyce's family, is our family. Amen. I'd just like to call none other than Minister Stephanie Richard as she comes to bring and say the opening prayer. God bless you. First, I must greet my pastor and everyone here present to be with the family of the day or dearly departed sister. At this time, I'm going to pray. Father, our Father, in the name of Jesus, your Son, we come. We come this morning, Almighty God, to give you thanks and to give you praise for this time that we can gather in this fashion. Lord, it could have been otherwise, 
But because of your grace and your mercy this morning, we are allowed this time to come in and to be with the family of our dear departed sister. Mighty God, we thank you at this moment, Lord, that you are the I am that I am. You are the almighty God. You are the everlasting Father. And you said you will comfort the comfortless. You said, Almighty God, that when we grieve, O oh God, at the passing of one, we do not grieve as others do that has no hope. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will comfort these, her children, Lord, as they go from day to day. Oh God, let them know that you are with them. Oh, mighty God, and you will be with them continually, Lord, because you are their refuge. You are their strength. You are their very present help in this time. And mighty God, I pray that you'll wrap your arms around them, God, and keep them safe. Give them, oh God, what it takes to go on, the strength, knowing, God, that their dear departed mother has gone to be with you in paradise. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment, God, that we can come into your presence and to say thank you for being with us and keeping us, Lord, and helping us, Lord Jesus, and helping your children, God, to stand knowing, God, that they have you as their refuge and their strength. Bless us all today, God, as we gather in this fashion. God, and as you, we put our dear sister to rest, oh God, may we also know that one day, if we make the way, oh God, that you have, part, that you have called us to, uh, that we will see her one day in the sweet by and by. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. amen. Praise his name, praise his name, praise his name. This is a celebration of life and we want to celebrate if there's one thing that Sister Joyce loved to do, that was to worship God and praise God and give him praise. Those of you watching, wherever you are in your home, in your vehicle, I'm going to ask you to join in with the praise and worship today. I want to welcome at this time none other than Sister Sandra Marshall and the FMT Worship Team. This morning, I invite you to join in with us with worship. That's something that my mom loves to do. And this morning, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to worship and sing songs of praise at my mom's homegoing service this morning. So in your homes, in your cars, join us this morning as we celebrate the life of my mom by giving God praise and thanks this morning.
just let alone. Let us stand before the
been so, so Mother Joyce is in heaven rejoicing and praising God, and it is a fitting for us to also praise God here on earth. Amen, somebody. Praise his name. At this time, I'm going to call none other than Tasha Gentile to come with the scripture reading. She is the daughter of Sister Joyce Wright. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I want to thank you for joining us for the homegoing service for my mom. This morning's scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorrupt, incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory to, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that ye labor, as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Here is the reading of God's holy word. We honor by saying, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, and now and forever shall be, word without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Tasha. Appreciate it. You may be seated, everyone. God bless you. We're just going to ask everyone to direct your attention to the screen. We're going to have a number of video tributes. Um, we're going to have first one from a close friend that's none other than Marjorie Michelin. Then we're going to have a poem video presentation from Azaria Virgilian. These are the grandchildren, children, Azaria Virgilian, Brian Harris III, and Tia Gentiles. Tribute reading 
from Brian Harris the first and Brian Harris the second. These are the grandchildren, and also a video tribute from Dr. Bishop Al Baxter. Hello. My name is Marjorie. No, better yet, Maji. That's for my friend Joyce called Maji. I really like it. First of all, <clears throat> I want you to know how I met Joycey. One day we had uh, you had um you had a visitor, a preacher. And I was invited, I'm trying to cut it short. I was invited, so her, her daughter, um, Nikki, gave me a ride. And when we reached, reached the church, we came out and we were there. And she just, jo Joyce, just said to me, hi, because we were new it to each other. He said, hi, I'm a member of this church, but you know, I don't have a friend here. Will you be my friend? And I thought this was, it was so childish and beautiful. I said, of course I'll be your friend. And that was the beginning Of a beautiful friendship. Oh my God. Sam was not gonna cry. <laughs> it was a beautiful friendship. I don't think, I don't think there is a, a friendship like ours. It was a God friendship. We pray morning, we pray night. I mean, this woman had me on a role that I never had before and I can say that because of her I can say before the Lord that I have drawn closer to my God because she don't let up she called you five she called me not five but six six thirty seven o'clock on her way to work and then while she's going to on her way, way to work She's going, I hear her saying, oh, hi, good morning, how are you? Have a beautiful day to people, and she's praying with me. I mean, can you imagine that? And anyway, it goes on and goes on. Our friendship is so beautiful. It, it's, it's beyond, you know, it, it's beyond your imagination. We, we know things about each other that nobody else knows. I mean, it's a beautiful friendship and I wish that everybody could have a friend or could have a relationship with each other, a God. That's truly a God relationship that we have. And I mean, I would like others to have this relationship. She's a beautiful lady. She was a beautiful lady. And she still is gone to, gone to heaven because I see her one day. She's dressed, she was up on the balcony in the sky there, I know. And she's all full with white, beautiful white. And there was a, a man, I can't say it was Jesus, it was a a man, tall man beside her, and he was dressed in all white too. And I look up and, and she said, Hi Maggie, and just smile. And I think, and I'm thinking, oh she I, I did think, oh she's in heaven. And I smile. But I know she is. <laughs> so I just want her children to think of her as a beautiful person, a beautiful mother, because she is. And I don't think anyone ever knew her like I do. I can truly say she is my friend. And I love her very much and I still love her.
This poem was made for our wonderful grandmother. We love you, Grandma, and we miss you. Losing a Queen. Christmas Eve is a day of excitement, joy, and cheer. But this Christmas Eve was not the same since we lost someone quite dear. We got a call from our parents to say, come very quick. We hurried and drove down to the hospital because Grandma was very sick. Tears, pain, sadness, screams, and many hurtful cries. Remember the moment crystal clear when we had to say goodbye. Grandma, we love you. Grandma, we miss you. You made us happy when times were sad. You taught us what was right and wrong and what was good or bad. Goodbye, wonder. Until next time, best friend. We will see you in the streets of gold when we meet you again. Don't you worry. Don't you cry. We will be okay while you're away. Love your grandkids. I will be reading this poem on behalf of one of grandma's sisters who, wouldn't, who was not able to make it to here today, but she sends her condolences. She was known to most of us as Peggy, often to refer to her as Sis, a title and role she proudly honored during her lifetime. She was the eldest of the four siblings, even though in stature she seemed like the youngest. An older sister is a friend, a listener, a counselor, and a sharer of delights and sorrows, too. I recall on numerous occasions she would be the one to ensure if whether Pam, Danny, or myself were okay and finding out how her nieces or nephews were doing. Even though we were living in different countries, our telephone conversations kept us in touch with each other. We would often sometimes spend hours on the phone conversing about every little minute detail. Peggy was always encouraging and willing to provide the emotion, emotional support and listening ear when, when one was needed. When my daughter passed away in 2005, my sister Dearest was a tower of strength for me in the most difficult time of my life. From the onset, she ensured that I got moral support, the, the moral support necessary. I remember her traveling from Canada to be with me physically during my period of grief. My beloved nieces right now, I am so broken that the rigid regist registrations and travel restrictions of this worldwide pandemic are prohibiting our movement and preventing us from being there with you during this difficult time, as Peggy would have done the same for us. Nonetheless, we are there with you in spirit, and may our love surround you and lift you guys up. Sister dear, even though I can no longer see you with my eyes or touch you with my hands, I feel you within my broken heart. I hold you in close memory, and your spirit will live forever. In some ways, we are so different, yet our values are very much alike. Peggy was a lovable soul, calm, caring, and assuring. She was humble, God-fearing, and a forgiving woman. She was always the one willing to forgive and forget. She held no grudges and continuously went above and beyond for the ones she loved. I remember quite well that she was an optimistic individual, and saw the positive in most challenging situations. Her strength was her belief in the Christian faith and principles, which made her a warrior for her creator. She led a life to be admired during her walk with the Lord and was not afraid to worship him and express her gratitude for the many blessings she, he bestowed upon her and her family members. Sis, though your smile is gone forever, your memory is our keepsake with with which we'll never part. Our heart will ache in sadness, and the tears will flow. For why we had to lose you, no one will ever know. We hold you in our hearts, and there, will be remain, there you will be to remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. Your life is a blessing, your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and will be missed beyond measure. My nieces, Sandra, Nikki, Tasha, and Monique, I know it will, it's heart-wrenching, but Remember, even through your, love, your beloved mother's song has ended her melody, it still lingers on within you. Remember that angels are always near to those who are grieving, to whisper to them that their loved ones are in the safe hands of God's. To my brother Danny and sister Beverly, be, 
Be strong, though, love, though the love won't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and still held so dear. Sister dearest, continue to sleep in eternal peace and take your best. You will be missed each day and every day, for you, for you were someone special who meant more than words can say. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord, for from henceforth the rest from their labors and their good works follow them. Hello there, I'm Dr. Al Baxter. I'm the Bishop of Faith Merkel Temple. The church that Sister Joyce had been a, a faithful and ardent member for pretty close 30 years. During this time, Sister Joyce has proven to be not just a member of a church, but a pillar, someone who helps to hold up the church, a foundation. Sister Joyce is well known to be a lover of God from her heart, not just a church member, a hardworking person, child of God in the church. She does everything that she finds to do and everything that she puts her hand to prosper. She brought her entire family to the church. She prayed for them, got them saved, and she works to build the church, both literally and spiritually. She was a prayer warrior. She was a woman that helps others to see the light of God. Losing her is like losing a right arm. Sister Joyce has been a friend, not just to a few members, but certainly to all the members and, and to me, the pastor, the bishop. She was a giver. She gives her time, her talent, she gives finances, she gives her love, she gives everything that she could to make the house of God, the church of God, and the people of God better. Today, uh, I am here to say, even though we miss her, but the truth is, the Bible said being absent from the body is being present with the Lord. And to be present with the Lord is greater than being here on earth, even though she meant so much to all of us. She's present with the Lord, and that is a great thing right now. Being present with the Lord, she is enjoying the fruit of her labor. She's enjoying the good times, basking in the sun, sunshine around the throne of God. She was a person that everyone can say she has touched my life. Everyone that she comes across, they can say she touched my life. And not only that, but she had been a good example. She was the epitome. She exemplified the scripture that says, love your neighbor as yourself. She was uh, the person who would do to others as she would like them to do to her. Yes, my friends, our sister Joyce has gone on before us. We look forward to meet her in the future. God bless you, sister Joyce. Safe journey. And we'll see you in the future. Thank you all very much. Be comforted, everyone especially her daughters, be comforted. She's okay. She's just gone on before. And we will see her again if we keep the faith. Be encouraged and be comforted. God bless you. I will be reading these tributes on behalf of my grandmother's other two siblings. 
My dear sister, I can't believe you are not with us anymore. I won't be able to call you and hear your voice or laugh. This is one of the hardest things I've had to do. Writing this is like saying goodbye, which I don't want to do. So I will just say, see you later, because I will see you again. Your work on earth is complete, and you are in the arms of Jesus. Ever since I can remember, it has always been Peggy and Pam that will never change. Death can never separate us because you will always be in my heart and memories. You will always be my big sister. I love you and miss you, and I always will, Pam. And my sister to whom I love so much, she was a dedicated mother to her children. My sister was a hard and dedicated worker who always wanted the best for her children. My sister was trustworthy, easy to talk to, and always encouraging you to be the best. She was kind, loving, and caring, and she wouldn't stop for nothing to take care of her children, Monique, Nicoline, Tasha, and Sandra. You will be greatly missed. Farewell, my loving sis, from your brother, Danny. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we'll have another scripture reading, and that's going to be from another daughter, Sister Monique Virgilian. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the scripture today is from Psalms 133. The reason for the scripture this morning is because it's one of my mom's favorite scripture. She's always um, telling us how united we have to be and together. So here goes the reading, Psalms 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirt of his garments as the dew of Hermon and has the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, word without end, amen. Amen, praise God. You know, I was wondering why you guys had picked that scripture, that's uh, church scripture, and I don't usually hear that at a homegoing service, a celebration of life, or a funeral. And I understand it, but what makes it even more significant is that your family lives that. And if that was her favorite, one of her favorite scriptures and that was something she communicated, Joyce said, be united, be together. When I look at her family, I see unity. And the Bible said how good and how pleasant, continue to live in that unity. Because where unity is, that's where the Spirit of God is. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And, and we're going to continue that spirit of unity. Nothing's going to separate. We're going to make Sister Joyce proud as a united and strong family. You shall not fall because you are united. You shall stand forever. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. At this time, a very close family friend to Sister Joyce's family, that is none other than the Samuels. They are coming with a tribute. Sister Samuel, I believe it is. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm just here to give a tribute to a beloved mom, 
who I call mommy, just like her girls. And I want to start off by saying, this is her story. This is her song, praising her savior all the day long. Mommy loved her savior. Mommy loved praising God. Indeed, Mommy was a true worshiper. Mommy had inherited a love, the, Mommy had inherited the love of thing, the things of God, particularly when it comes to prayer. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, it says, prayer without ceasing. That's Mommy for you. Always praying in season and out of season. I tell you this, we lost a mother, but we did not lost her priors. Amen. I can hear the angel saying, you fought a good fight, you finished the race, and you have kept the faith. Here laid up your crown of righteousness. Mommy had kept her faith, and indeed she ran well. Amen. Over the years that I've known mommy, She's always showed care for my family and I. She always cared for my children like her own grandchildren. I remember a time when we ran into difficulty securing childcare for our son when he was younger. And mommy never hesitated to show her helping hand. I remember asking her, mommy, would you be able to help me? And she just stopped me right there and she said, bring the baby, come. <laughs> always lending a helping hand whenever she is needed. Another wonderful memory of mommy, I remember when we moved into our, our home, and mommy asked me, do you need my help? I said, whenever Sandra is coming over, mommy, you know you can come. And mommy was there. And on that day when mommy came, We were figuring out how to fix a simple door handle, a fridge handle, sorry. And my husband, who claims he's the handy mandy around the house, couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but mommy never stopped. <laughs> mommy was the one who figured out the door handle was for a different fridge model. <laughs> that is mommy for you. <laughs> Mommy always believed she can do all things through Christ who strengthened her. Yes. Mommy's, mommy's stories of love, empathy, and compassion will never be forgotten because her legacy will continue in her four beautiful daughters, Sandra, Nikki, Tasha, and Monique, and most of all, her amazing grandchildren. Even though she's no longer here with us, mommy is in heaven doing what she loved to do most, praising her savior. My husband would like to be here today, but due to the pandemic and restriction, he's not able. But he wrote a poem, and I want to read that poem. We, have, we had a praying and God-fearing mother, one who, never, not one who really never grow old. Her smile was made of sunshine and hope, and her heart was solid as gold. Her eyes were as bright as a shining star. Her love for others was pure and true. We have a praying, sorry, we had a praying and God-fearing mother, and that's the way it will be. But take heed, because she's still keeping eyes on all of us, so make your calling an election sure. Mommy, Grandma Joyce, Mother Joyce, you will be forever be in our hearts. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful. That was so wonderful. We thank you for that, Sister Lisa. 
And at this time, we're going to have a video tribute from the grandchildren. We're going to have a song video tri tribute. And right after that, we'll have another video tribute. And that's coming from the Powells, who are a long-standing family friend. for coming to the celebration of Grandma's life. Grandma was the most caring, the most loving, the most healthiest person on earth. We've all had that moment with her where she would tell us how much, how much she cared for us, how much she loved us, how much we mattered, and how much God loves us. We miss you, Grandma, and we love you forever. Um, Grandma was just so loving and just caring. She always cared about everyone before she had even anything. And we love you, Grandma. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, thank you for everything you've done. We love you. Grandmother was a very awesome, hardworking woman. She was caring, loving, very healthy and was a prayer warrior as well. She took care of her grandchildren at any time of the day when our parents were busy. She would correct us when we were wrong because she loved us. As much as I won't see her face and her smile, she's in a better place now. I love you, Grandma. My grandmother had a smile that was amazing. It could light up a room. And her smile was just contagious and it was heartwarming. And it was just fantastic to see. And I can't see it anymore. And I miss it. And I just want her to know that even though we are in a tough spot, a rough situation right now, we're going to get out of this with God and with <laughs> your enormous smile on our faces. So we love you, Grandma. We miss you so much and we thank you so much for everything that you've done and we'll see you again soon. My grandma was the most kind-hearted, polite, humble, generous, and down-to-earth person I knew. She was a remarkable, hard-working woman who stood by us, encouraged, and celebrated our every success. Although it might be hard, today I choose to smile because of the impact she had on my life, the memories we share, and because I know she's in a better place. I'll cherish every single moment and second I spent with you. I'll always love you, Grandma. My Grandma Peggy was a grandparent like no other. She was nurturing, loving, and caring. She was second mother to me and all the other grandchildren, in the spiritual and in the physical. She was an outstanding child of God that prayed for our entire family daily. She always checked on us and made sure that we were well-fed and comfortable, even when she didn't have the resources or the money to do so. She always found a way. She is who showed me what a first class work ethic looked like and that if I ever want anything in life, I need to work hard and stay close to God. I love you, Grandma, and I can't wait to see you in heaven. It's sort of strange coming to you right now, Grandma, with a farewell video, when quite frankly, you were the queen of introductions. Whenever you came into the room, your smile would light it up. It would be a beautiful thing to see. And whenever I'd see you, you'd always make me feel super special. I was either your next preacher grandson or your next model grandson. And you always just make everybody in the room feel like they're the number one star. And that's what I'm gonna miss the most about you, Grandma. You're gonna fly high and I can't wait to see you in heaven. The first word that comes to mind when I think about my grandmother is selfless. Grandma was always the one who would look out for the people around her, but especially her grandchildren. She loved us so much and cared for us so deeply throughout the years that it eventually just became instinctive to her. And whenever she didn't see us around, she would never hesitate to ask um, where we were, if we ate something, <laughs> and just to ensure that we had everything that we needed. And I know that as her granddaughter, that I was always comforted by the fact that there was someone out there who was looking out for every single one of us. And as I sit here and reflect on her life and on her legacy, I know that her kind and thoughtful nature 
is what I will definitely miss the most about her. So thank you, Grandma, for caring so much for us, for each and every single one of us throughout the years. Thank you for showing us what it means to truly have a selfless heart. I love you so much, and I will always miss you. The word that comes to mind, I think about my grandma, is resilient. Born in Jamaica and raised in Jamaica, I wanted to have a better life for her and her family. She took the leap of faith to go to Canada. I know there's not a lot for African Americans. She still do what she had to do to make a legacy for the rest of our family. And that's something that I'll cherish forever. The way she carried the gospel, she prayed for us, prayed for our family. It's something that I'll cherish for the rest of my days. I love you, Grandma. We all love you. And we'll see you again one day. My grandmother was like a second mother to me. She was a nurturer through and through, a very generous woman who gave everything and anything for her grandchildren. She was very determined um, and resilient and persevered through everything. And she is quite literally the reason I am such a determined and hardworking person today. She is the matriarch of our family. Grandma, you raised us well with the fierceness and strength of a mother's love. We will miss you, we love you. Thank you, my sweet, sweet grandmother. My grandmother was one of a kind. No matter what her emotions were, she would do whatever her mind was set out to do. She would cook and clean, and as kids, we would just hear about it all day. But she never failed to amaze me on how orderly our house was through her faith. Her faith deposited seeds in all of us that we couldn't see back then, but we definitely see it now. Till we meet again, Grandma. I love you. My grandmother was an absolute inspiration. She was kind, loving, she was giving, she was funny, <laughs> she was a nurturer, she was independent, she was resilient, she was hardworking. There are so many words that could describe her. There are so many instances, so many memories that would attest to the remarkable woman that she was. And it's hard to know that she won't be with us in the physical, but I take solace in knowing that she raised four strong women, 13 beautiful grandchildren. She created a legacy and planted seeds that will bear great fruit. My grandmother was a woman that could pray through any situation even until her last moments with us. She let us know that God was in control and with him, all things are possible. So even though this time is a little hard, I'm not gonna lie, it's very hard. I know that there's a reason, there's a plan. I know that she's in a better place. And I know that I have to do my part to make her proud. Grandma, I love you. I miss you. And I'm gonna keep smiling because of you. Love you, Grandma. Love you, Grandma. Again, I love you, Grandma. I love you, Grandma.
say goodbye, I'll see you later. I can't say goodbye, I'll see you later. God gave you peace, he gave you favor, yeah, yeah. Man, you hear from me, hear from you're me. so close to, me. close to me. It was a Christmas morning, at the earliest dawning. I got an urgent calling, oh my heart was falling, yeah, yeah. They told me that you left me You know I miss you, miss you. Shedding all my tears, I wanna be with, you. be with you This is my issue yeah. Why did you go so soon? Why did you go so soon? Can you hear me? Fear God, do not fear me. Just give me glory. Can't lie, I'm missing my grandma. My heart is feeling so shattered. Without you, nothing else matters. Hey, hey, why can't you stay, stay? Even though I pray, pray. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Wow, that was brilliant. Awesome. Grandchildren, awesome job. They wrote that song and they did such a fabulous job. I know that grandma is so proud of you and what a talent. We have some all-stars. She really 
gave the world some amazing all-stars, and we give God the praise for all of them. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. At this time, we have another one of her all-stars grandchildren, and that's none other than um, Brother Nathaniel Marshall, and he's come in to perform a dance um, for us today. Give the Lord a praise as he comes.
everyone. Oh, wonderful. Praise God. Oh, I believe Sister Joyce is smiling from heaven right now. Amen, somebody. Why don't you just give God a praise? Come on, come on. Just, just join in heaven's praise right now. Come on, somebody. This is what Sister Joyce loved to do. She loved to worship God. I vow to praise him in the good and bad. I vow to praise him whether happy or sad because praise is what we do. Hallelujah. Well done, Brother Nathaniel. Praise God. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we give you glory, Lord, and we give you praise. What remarkable grandchildren. And at this time, everyone, we are going to hear Joyce's life story given by more grandchildren, none other than Nichelle Ellison, Nikita Harris, and Tamara Gentles. everyone. My name is Michelle. I am the daughter of Nikki and I am my grandma's first grandchild. Hi, my name is Tamara Gentles and my mother is Tasha and I am also one of grandma's grandchildren. Hi, my name is Nikita. I am Nikki's second daughter and I'm another grandchild. And we will just be presenting the reading of Grandma's life story. You can't hear me? <laughs> um, Joyce Herman Wright, most affectionately called Peggy, was a loved mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, cousin, and friend. She embraced life and maximized every opportunity to live it with dignity, humility, honesty, joy, and in the fear of the Lord. Grandma's life began on February 3rd, 1954, to late parents Eva Banner and Sonny Wright. She was the oldest of three siblings, Beverly Gary, Angela Wilson, and Danny Hopkins. She grew up in Yorton, St. Catherine, where she met Aubin Masters, the love of her life, and father to her four beautiful daughters. She soon relocated to Faith Spen, St. Anne, with Aubin and his family. In 1971, they welcomed the birth of their first daughter, Sandra, with Nicolene, Tashika, and Monique following close after. In 1980, in search of better opportunities, Aubin migrated to Canada, and Grandma was left to raise their four daughters. 
she endured many challenges and hardships to provide for her children. In 1984, her aunt presented her with the opportunity to travel to the Bahamas for employment. Though it was difficult for her to leave her children behind, she knew it was the best decision she could make to provide for them. She returned to Jamaica in 1989 following the death of her mother to continue caring for her children. Being a single mother raising four daughters in Jamaica caused grandma to be a strict disciplinarian. She had a mean pinch and a straight right hand that would make our parents think twice about running away from her and obediently presenting themselves for a whooping. <laughs> Regardless if you were a runner like Sandra, or liked to hide under the bed like Mickey, rest assured, there was no escaping that right hand. <laughs> she gave them stern warnings not to let her come to a meeting at their school and get any bad reports from their teachers. And boy, did they take those warnings to heart. It's been said that my mother, Nikki, would get the most beatings for not coming home on time, for spending her bus fare, and not having any means to get home. Yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, our parents can often be heard saying that they are thankful that grandma raised them the way that she did. They attribute their successes to their upbringing, so much so that they have incorporated much of grandma's sayings and disciplinary measures into the rearing of us. As most of my siblings and cousins are under the age of 18, the jury is kind of still out on that, though. <laughs> Grandma had a caring and giving spirit. Though she didn't have much, she was well known in our community for her generosity. Whether it was supplying food or clothing to those in need, or packing her quaint living quarters with neighborhood kids, so they could share her children's textbooks and television, there was no limit to her big heart. On various occasions, she opened her doors and offered her bed to distressed individuals to keep a roof over their heads. Her generosity continued here in Canada as she made regular donations to various organizations such as Canadian Diabetes Association, the Salvation Army, and many other charitable organizations. She also sponsored children in Jamaica and through organizations such as World Vision. A few years after returning to Jamaica, her children migrated to Canada to join their father. Grandma stayed back to raise her first grandchild, me, and we joined later with the rest of the family in Canada and subsequently made it our home. Grandma loved God and she took her faith seriously. This was evident in the way she lived her life. She was a woman of prayer because she believed it was the key to unlocking any door. She was never one to follow blindly, so a lot of time was spent studying the Bible, looking for greater understanding and revelation. She would often be heard throughout the house with her phone on speaker, sharing the word with her best friend, Maggie, saying, Madge, Madge, you nah listen. <laughs> she would also have frequent discussions with her son-in-law, Greg, about thought-provoking revelations, prophecies, and world issues. She loved her church and her church family, and never missed an opportunity to fellowship with her brothers and sisters in the presence of the Lord. She was devoted to building her church and the kingdom, in so much that our bishop would often speak of the many hours she spent climbing ladders and hammering nails when constructing a new edifice. All of us grandkids have had the pleasure of living with grandma at some point in our lives, and I believe we can all attest to the fact that living with her was like living with a drill sergeant. I say that because she was a clean fanatic and nothing could be out of place. She would always tell us Cleanliness is next to godliness. So trust me when I say the OCD was real. Very. <laughs> she loved having her grandchildren around, and we equally loved spending time with her. Our favorite pastimes included shopping and cooking. 
The kitchen would be crowded with bickering children, disagreeing over recipes, and Grandma was busy chasing behind all of us, telling us to clean as we go. Guys, wanna make sure you clean up before Sandra come home? <laughs> <laughs> that was always fun to watch. Though she was small in stature, Grandma was no pushover. She was self-reliant and determined to get things done, with or without additional help. Whatever the task, she was ready to roll up her sleeves to get it done. Whether it was climbing on top of the house to fix a leaky roof, mixing cement and mortar to pave the backyard, weeding the grass with a machete, or sewing our tethered clothing, she did it all. She was no damsel in distress. <laughs> She was not willing to conform to anyone's opinion of her. She was constantly reinventing herself to ensure that she stayed current and relevant. She defied the status quo. She kept up with the latest technologies, made sure that she had her AirPods, the latest phone, the yep. latest iPads, and she always stayed fashionable in the newest styles. Whenever she accompanied our parents anywhere, she blended in perfectly. Strangers were often surprised when they learned that she was not one of the four sisters, and she was actually their mother. We could never be prouder to be a part of this beautiful family that was made possible through you. We had a bond that was unbreakable. But on the morning of De Thursday, December 24th, that bond was shaken by the fear that we were losing you forever. On the morning of Tuesday, December 22nd, my grandmother was admitted to the hospital. Be and because of the stringent restrictions in place, her family was prevented from being there in person with her, touching her and comforting her. Again, our bond was tested, as this would mark the first time a member of our family would face such a setting alone. Frustration set in, but it did not break us. We are fighters, so we found ways around the barriers. We stayed connected with her through WhatsApp and FaceTime. We also connected in spirit through prayers and in worship. In fact, she spent one of her last moments in a time of worship over WhatsApp with my Auntie Sandra and Uncle Greg as they sang and she raised her hands in worship. Through it all, my grandma's faith remained intact, and she remained optimistic that she would be coming home to celebrate Christmas. On December 23rd, our bond was yet again tested when our family received a dreadful phone call that our grandmother and mother was being transported to another hospital. We all hurried to the hospital with the hope that we would get a glimpse of her while she was being transported. Or at the very least, she would know that she was not alone and that the whole complete and full strength of her lineage was right there with her. The last conversation that we had with our grandmother was reassuring her that we were all outside and that we love her. Her response was, I know. We waited anxiously in the hospital parking lot, strengthening our bonds with prayers and decrees of life and victory. In the early morning of December 24th, that bond received its greatest blow 
when the doctor finally called to declare they had done their best and pronounced that our grandmother had crossed over to the other side. Our world shattered and we were left in shock and disbelief. Our darling grandmother was ushered home to glory. Our circle is now one soul smaller, but our bond is even greater because death doesn't have the power to destroy the timeless memories and legacy we all share of the remarkable wonder we call our grandmother and mother. Time will never dictate the depth of our love or erase the rich assortment of treasured memories. Inside each of us are volumes of organic memories made from authentic family gatherings created in hospital rooms, around dinner tables, backyard barbecues, Sunday worships, impromptu family gatherings, weddings, baby christenings, graduations, and family vacations. For every occasion, we have a story that has tattooed and engraved you to our very core. Grandma is survived by her four daughters, one stepdaughter, three son-in-laws, 13 grandchildren, two sisters, one brother, five nieces, two nephews, and numerous cousins and friends. Rest safely, now grandma, in the bosom of your savior. Though leaving us, Though your leaving us was unexpected, we will live intentionally to make sure that we meet you again. You will live forever in us, and we love you endlessly. We love you, Grandma. We love you, Grandma. Praise God, praise God. That was a wonderful, wonderful summary and illustration of the life of a remarkable woman, Sister Joyce Wright. Our time has sadly ran out on a, um, all together on today. We're gonna call Sister Tasha to come quickly um, and to um, give us a, 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 a rendition, God bless you and then we will close up momentarily. But I wanna say, grandchildren, you guys have been wonderful today. I know that Sister Joyce is proud. Good afternoon, everyone. There's a song that says, may the life that I live speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing I can say, but may the life that I live speak for me. And for Mommy Joyce, her, definitely her life that she lived is speaking for her. She cannot say anything at this moment, but her life that she lived is speaking for her. So we give God glory, we give God thanks for bringing her home, for taking her home. As much as it's sad and we wish that she was here, we give God thanks and we rejoice that she is home and she's resting. She's resting, praise God. Um, I'm just gonna be quick, I'm just gonna sing um, just a chorus. If you know it, just sing with me at home, in your car, wherever you are, just sing with me, rejoice with me, amen? I'm gonna say goodbye.
trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. No grave can hold her body down. Oh, no grave can hold her body down. Oh, no grave can hold her body down. When the trumpet of the Lord shall Praise God. We give God the glory, we give God the praise, and we give God all the honor. I believe that Sister Joyce is smiling down from heaven. Amen? I know she is. Somebody just say praise the Lord here today. I know she is, and I know she's worshiping God in heaven right now. I know she's praising God right now. I need just about one or two people just to give God a praise. Just go ahead and give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his name. Um, we had Minister Stephanie here earlier on that gave the opening prayer from Faith Mergle Temple. And also here um, is a member of the family, none other than my brother, Minister Gregory Marshall. God bless you. Good to have you and all you dear saints. We have to go, but I'm going to leave you with three, three, three points as we consider and celebrate the dear life of our dear, wonderful mother, Sister Joyce. Number one, I want you to consider the sovereignty of God. God is in control. You know, there is a sting because of the passing and how she passed away. But we cannot doubt that God is in control. He knows why. He understands what we don't understand. Somebody say amen. And when we don't understand, there needs to be comfort and peace in the fact that God knows why. Amen, somebody? And he also knows what you're feeling. He knows. The Bible says that we have a high priest, Jesus, who is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He can empathize and sympathize with you at this time. The songwriter said, Jesus knows all about my struggles, and he will guide me till the day is done. Point number two is taken from Matthew 7 and 16. You know them by their fruit. And I'm here to tell you, we know Sister Joyce by her fruit. We have four exceptional daughters, Sandra, Nikki, Tasha, Monique, exceptional daughters. I didn't know as a teenager boy growing up with the young people in church that one of these teenagers, Sister Sandra, was the starting foundation to bring such a large, beautiful, outstanding, and talented family. I didn't even know that Sandra had this type of family behind her as a child growing up as a teenager. And look at this family, even the grandchildren, such talent that, and everyone, everyone from the daughters to the grandchildren, they have all played a meaningful role in Faith Miracle Temple. And I just give God the praise for all of you. We know Sister Joyce by her natural fruit, her daughters, such a success story. And you guys are still advancing, still growing, still progressing, and still leaving your historical mark here on earth. We know you by your fruit, Sister Joyce. And we know her by her spiritual fruit. I call her uh, a, a grandmother mother. She is someone that not only was a mother to her children, but some grandmothers are grandmothers, but some grandmothers are grandmother mother. Some, I, I didn't I couldn't keep up. Where is she living now? Is she living with Sister Sandra? Is she living with Sister Nikki? Is she living with Sister Tasha Monique? Why? Because she was also a mother to her grandchildren. We know her by her natural fruit, but we also know her by her spiritual fruit. I did not know that she was the one, Sister Joyce was the one that brought her sisters to the Lord. That one of them today is a minister of the gospel. We know her by her spiritual fruit. Sister Joyce when we were building the church, she 
climbed up ladders and climbed up scaffolds to help build the church of God. We know you in your prayer meetings, in your prayer seasons, and in your worship. We know you by your fruit, Sister Joyce. We know you by your fruit. And then finally, I want to say and leave this with you. We didn't know that this would happen at this time. No one could conceive that we would be here. Um, such a beautiful scenery here, lovely. But we didn't know we would be doing this at this time. And Sister Joyce did not know that this would happen at this time. And yet, and I leave you with this point, yet she died ready. Come on, somebody. She did not know that she would be going home to meet her Savior. If some of us knew we were going next week, we would have so much things to put in order. But her house was in order. <laughs> Hallelujah. She did not have to call Sandra, Nikki, or Monique and say, bring this. Or, uh, or, or Tasha and say, bring this. I have to get some things in order. No. When her time came, she was all ready, ready to leave and meet her Savior, her body was perishing, but the inward man was saying, going home, I'm going home, there's nothing to leave me here. I'm a glimpse of my heavenly God. home, praise God, I'm going home. She died ready. Everyone that is watching, that's here, make sure, as my mom says, that you're calling and election is sure, so that when your time comes and you don't know when it is, that you will be ready and prepared to meet the Lord in the sky. Stand to your feet, everyone. Stand. Stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, for Sister Joyce's legacy, children, grandchildren, I pray for them. Strengthen them, even as her favorite scripture was about how good and pleasant it is for children to dwell together in unity. Let that united bond that they have be even tighter than it ever was. She cannot come to us, but we can go to her. I pray in the name of Jesus that when our time comes, we too, whether it be tomorrow or years ahead, will be ready to greet you and meet you in the air. Bless them. Bless them. Let them live a life that will continue to make their mother and grandmother proud in Jesus' holy name. And everyone says, amen, amen. The Funeral Home New Haven, such an exceptional staff. They're coming at this time, management and staff. We thank you for your professionalism. They're going to come and give us direction about where we go from here. the right family I'd like to thank everyone for attending service today and for those of you who joined us on the live stream as service concludes we will be traveling to Glenview Memorial service for the final interment the route we will take will have us leaving the funeral home making a right onto Derry a right onto airport a right onto Steele's we'll make a left onto highway 50 and then a right into the cemetery once we've arrived at, arrived at the cemetery we'll be traveling to the Garden of Heritage if there is anyone traveling ahead of the funeral fleet, I would ask that you please leave the way to the grave clear. Uh, and because of COVID protocols, we are only allowed 10 people into the cemetery. So I just ask that we please are respecting the guidelines of the cemetery. And once again, to the Wright family, I would like to thank you for allowing us to serve you. Pastor will lead us in. Praise God. Lord. You could turn the music up a little bit. Lord, make me know my end and the measures of my days. What is it that I may know how frail I am? Behold, you have made my days as the hand and my age as nothing before you. Barely every man at his best state is altogether 
Every step. 